Thank you very much. It's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure to, to, to give this seminar. I will start by sharing my, my screen so you can see slides. Uh, so let me know if you see it correctly. It's fine. So I, my group ha has been working in really to, to try to, to understand uh, aging from the molecular point of view, because we think that aging is at the origin of many diseases, uh, many of the non-infectious uh, diseases, such as cancer, cardiovascular, neurodegenerative diseases, degenerative diseases of different tissues like lung, liver, kidney, fibrosis, uh, metabolic diseases like diabetes. So therefore, we think it's very important to understand aging from the molecular point of view to be able to understand the origin of these diseases and therefore to be able to prevent them or to, to treat them uh, effectively. So uh, aging, uh, we think, is the cause and the diseases are the consequence of this cause, which is this molecular process of aging. Aging uh, can be influenced by, by the genes. Different species have different longevities, and this could be related to the genes. But also within the species, such as, for instance, the Homo sapiens, our species, uh, the life habits can influence this speed of aging and could also have a role in uh, how early these different diseases may be happening. In any case, if we know these molecular causes of aging, we will be able to have biomarkers to, to, to allow us to prevent or to diagnose early these different pathologies. But uh, we should also be able to delay aging and we should be able to design interventions that delay aging. So to, to, to be able to increase uh, the health span of individuals and delay uh, many different diseases at once, not only one disease, but many different diseases at once. So this would be something important um, that um, we could do if we really understand aging. And so what do we know about molecular aging? So there are many molecular pathways that have been involved in aging during the last years. And I will be talking about one of them, which is the shortening of the structures that are at the end of the chromosomes. The chromosomes is where the DNA is located. And at the end of the chromosomes, there is a very important structure known as the telomere which is important to protect our chromosomes, to protect our DNA. And uh, we know that this is, a, we think, is a primary cause of aging because uh, when telomeres are eroded, and this is something that happens associated with, with life. So as we, we age, um, our tissues have to, be, have to be regenerated. And this uh, uh, is leading to a progressive telomere shortening because telomere shorten associated to cell uh, division to cell multiplication and regeneration. And this telomere shortening will lead to other causes of aging, like genomic instability, uh, stem, stem cell exhaustion, cellular senescence, mitochondrial dysfunction. Uh, and uh, in general, uh, um, we think may be triggering many different I mean, causes of, of aging. So that's why we think is a primary event, this shortening of telomeres that happens associated to to the re regeneration of our cells and our tissues. There is an enzyme, it's called telomerase. Telomerase is able to uh, re-elongate telomeres. In fact, telomerase is present at the early stages of embryonic development. And, and there, it, telomerase is activated and it, it can elongate the telomeres of the new individual. And um, basically, after that, um, telomeres start shortening, even during uh, the embryonic development, when we are born, telomeres can shorten. And uh, we think this is uh, at, at the origin of aging. So if we uh, measure telomere length versus the age of an individual, the telomeres shorten in all organs and tissues, and this also includes the stem cells. And when telomeres are too short, we think this is at the origin of disease. Cancer is a, an age-related disease. It also happens associated with aging. But in the case of cancer, uh, there is a unique property of cancer cells, which is that they are, they are able to divide indefinitely. And this is because they can reactivate telomerase. And this happens in the majority of cancers. It's one of the most mutated genes in cancer, telomerase. Therefore, also demonstrating that uh, telomere length is really limiting for the ability of cells to divide. And uh, for instance, cancer cells can divide beyond what is normal by reactivating telomerase. So this is pointing to the importance of this enzyme in maintaining telomeres and allowing for, uh, for cell division. 
uh, we, we know that there are a number of diseases which are called telomere syndromes uh, that are associated to mutations in telomerase. So these individuals have um, uh, abnormal telomerase activity. Telomeres are not properly maintained uh, and uh, they are going to um, prematurely develop a number of diseases which are characterized by the premature loss of the regenerative capacity of tissues. So this is telling us that the telomere length is great limiting for human longevity. And if you have less telomeres than, than normal, you are going to develop prematurely a number of diseases which are characterized by, by the loss of regenerative capacity of tissues. Even in individuals that have a normal telomere length, I mean, that have a normal telomere gene, we know that different habits can influence the rate of telomere shortening. Uh, it has been proposed that telomere length is one of these biomarkers of aging. Shorter telomeres than normal could be really a prognostic factor for uh, different diseases, like cardiovascular disease, for example, and other diseases, cancer as well. So uh, we think that this telomere length could be a biomarker of aging. Uh, we know that telomeres are very important, uh, even before the human syndromes. Um, I participated together with a group of Carol Greider, Greider in demonstrating that telomeres are at the origin of aging by generating a telomerase deficient mouse model. So these mice have um, uh, abnormally short telomeres, and we could demonstrate that short telomeres were sufficient to induce chromosomal instability, to induce the loss of the regenerative capacity of tissues, and to induce many different degenerative pathologies in mice. Uh, this was, uh, as I said before, the human syndromes were, were discovered. Also, these mice, because they don't have telomerase, they are resistant to cancer. We try to induce cancer, which is also showing the importance of telomerase for, for cancer growth. So a cancer cell cannot grow if it does not have a mechanism to maintain the, the telomeres. So telomeres are important in humans. They are important in mice. However, there was something interesting. Uh, we humans are born with, uh, with very short telomeres compared to mice. So mice are born with longer telomeres than humans, but we can live up to 80 years and a mouse can only live two years. So some people thought, well, this means that telomeres are not determining aging because a mouse is born with very long telomeres but has a very short life. My group and then also other groups have shown that is not the initial telomere length, what is important, but the rate of telomere shortening. We found that mice shorten their telomeres a hundred times faster than humans. So probably this is why, even though they are born with long telomeres, they live much shorter because the rate of telomere shortening is much higher. We more recently showed whether this was true for other species. So we want to understand whether uh, telomeres are determining longevity in many different species, not only mice or human. And we published uh, a study uh, in which we measured telomere length in different species of mammals and birds, and we determined the, the rate of telomere shortening and we determined telomere length. We saw that telomere length at birth was not predictive of longevity, but the rate of telomere shortening uh, was predictive for longevity. So we have measured telomeres uh, by uh, technology that, that we develop, which can measure telomeres in individual cells. We measure telomeres in many different species, and we measure the rate of telomere shortening. And we saw that the rate of telomere shortening uh, was predictive of the lifespan, and it could be adjusted to a power law which is a mathematical uh, um, equation that, uh, that can explain uh, longevity or lifespan by using the rate of telomere shortening. So you can have two species like the elephant and the flamingo. They are very distant in evolution. So the elephant is a mammal, the flamingo is a bird. However, they have the same rate of telomere shortening and they also share the same longevity, more or less a flamingo or an elephant can live up to 60, 70 years of age. Uh, an elephant and a mouse, they are both mammals. They are much closer, uh, genetically closer. However, the mouse only lives two years, an elephant can live 70 years. And we think this is because they have very different rates of telomere shortening. So telomere length, we think is very important to determine longevity, not only in mice and humans, but maybe in uh, different species uh, like we are seeing here. 
So while the telomeres are important for aging, can we delay telomere shortening? Can we show that really telomeres, if they, uh, their shortening is delayed, we can increase longevity? We did this in 2008. So we generated transgenic mice. Now we were able to maintain the telomeres longer for longer times. And we could see that the, the mice that had longer telomeres, they had an increased median survival of about 40%. And they also had an increased health span. So the first mouse that die, die three times later than in the normal mice. In the normal mice, the first mouse die at a year of age, more or less. But in the group that maintained telomeres for longer, the first mouse die much later. So we are in delay in aging. And we, we showed that we could delay many different pathologies in fact, at three years of age, the majority of the control mice were dead, but the mice with long telomeres were still alive. And you can see here an image of two mice which are chronologically very old, two years old. This looks like an old mouse, but this one with the long telomeres looks like a younger mouse. So we are delaying aging. And with this, we are delaying pathologies associated with aging. We cannot do human transgenics but we can think about uh, therapeutic strategies to activate telomerase, which could um, elongate the short telomeres and maybe uh, prevent, uh, cure diseases associated with aging. With this in mice, we, we tested a telomerase gene therapy using adeno-associated viruses. So these viruses are non-integrative and they have been used to to uh, express genes in, 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 uh, in humans uh, to, to cure genetic diseases. So we thought that aging would be also uh, due to the, to the lack of telomerase in the adult organism, uh, which causes telomere shortening. So we, we would be able to activate telomerase and deliver telomerase into an adult organism. Maybe we could delay aging, uh, uh, delay age-related diseases. So we did the experiment with um, mice that were middle age, one year of age, or, or mice that were old, two years of age. And we give them a single intravenous injection with these gene therapy vectors. And we saw that the mice that were treated with telomerase, they had longer telomeres, they had less DNA damage as they were aging. And we saw that we could delay many different pathologies associated with aging, including cancer. So cancer was also appearing later. And this means that cancer is also caused by aging. Uh, and if we delay molecular aging, we can delay cancer. And we did not see any negative effect of expressing telomerase in this way, because the mice actually live longer. The one-year-old group live 20% longer, and the two-year-old group live 13% longer. So we do not see any uh, deleterious effect of activating telomerase by using gene therapy. So what we have done after that is well, we don't want to increase uh, longevity. Uh, this, is, this is not the priority. The priority would be to have treatments for, for age-related diseases, which we don't know how to cure right now. There are many age-related diseases that have no effective treat, treatment. And what we did was to, to generate mouse models uh, that recap recapitulate these diseases in mice and try to cure the, the different diseases by using the telomerase gene therapy. Uh, we showed that in mouse models of heart infarct, uh, uh, the telomeric gene therapy had a therapeutic effect. We also saw that a therapeutic effect in mouse models of aplastic anemia, which is one of the telomere syndromes. And more recently, we have shown also that in pulmonary fibrosis, and I will be talking more about pulmonary fibrosis, activation of telomerase uh, in mouse models of pulmonary fibrosis also had a therapeutic effect. So we know that pulmonary fibrosis, at least some types of pulmonary fibrosis, are originated by uh, presence of short telomeres. This is because there are familial cases of pulmonary fibrosis. There are individuals that are mutant for telomerase that are at a higher risk of pulmonary fibrosis. Pulmonary fibrosis increases with aging. The age can be synergizing with, uh, with factors like smoking, pollution, and uh, there are familial cases that are associated with mutations in telomerase. So, demonstrating that short telomeres can be at the origin of this disease. But also in sporadic cases, uh, individuals that develop pulmonary fibrosis have been also shown to have shorter telomeres. So we, we thought that you know, short telomeres 
must be synergizing with damage to the lung cells, uh, like smoking, pollution, radiation, and uh, they would be uh, really uh, injuring the, the, the regenerative cells in the lung. We know that the relevant cell type is the alveolar type 2 cells. We have we know this because we have generated telomere dysfunction in many different cell types. And we know that are the alveolar type 2 cells, the ones where if you induce uh, telomere dysfunction, you can induce pulmonary fibrosis. And um, uh, if these cells, because they have short telomeres, cannot regenerate, you will have an immune uh, response, fibroblast recruitment, you will have a fibrosis. The treatments that we have right now, they are not able to cure the disease because the short telomeres remain there and they are impairing the ability of these cells to regenerate. So no matter if you treat um, the fibrosis because you still have the short telomeres, the patients progress and this disease is a lethal disease. So there, are, there is no treatment that can, that can cure the fibrosis. Only the lung transplant is, uh, is, uh, is, um, is curative and this can only be done in 5% of the patients. So this is really a lethal disease. So we have, um, during these years, uh, shown that if we, we have generated mice that develop pulmonary fibrosis uh, due to short telomeres. Uh, this has been, this is described in these papers. And we have shown that if we treat these mice with telomeric gene therapy, we are able to, to cure fibrosis. So uh, you can see here the results. So it, mice that we treat with the, the placebo, with an empty vector, after they are diagnosed with fibrosis, they all progress to, to severe pulmonary fibrosis. You can see here the, the fibrosis in the lung. But the mice that were diagnosed with fibrosis that we have treated with the telomerase gene therapy, half of them ha have no fibrosis, so they have been uh, cured. The fibrosis has been reverted. And the other half have only small patches of fibrosis. So telomerase gene therapy has a therapeutic effect in, in this model, is a mouse model of pulmonary fibrosis associated to short telomeres. So we think this means that there is a, a, an opportunity to cure or to treat uh, efficiently humans with pulmonary fibrosis with a telomerase gene therapy strategy. Because when we do this in mouse models of pulmonary fibrosis, we see that we can um, actually reverse all the, all the molecular and cellular um, uh, events that occur associated to pulmonary fibrosis and that we are able to really to, to, to stop the progression of pulmonary fibrosis in mouse models. One thing we were worried about is that maybe we cure fibrosis, but maybe we can induce cancer down the line, right? Uh, because telomerase, remember, um, is also needed by cancer cells to, in order to produce a tumor. So we tried to test the, the safety of the telomerase gene therapy. Uh, we already knew that if we give mice the telomerase gene therapy and we wait until they, they die, there is no more cancer. Actually, cancer is delayed. But, uh, well, mice live much longer than humans, much, much shorter than humans, and we wanted to challenge mice uh, to develop cancer uh, to see whether uh, telomerase gene therapy could be uh, increasing the risk of cancer. And what we did was the following experiment. Either at the same time that we uh, put the telomerase gene therapy, we activated an oncogene in the lung. It's, it's called a KRAS oncogene. This, the activation of this oncogene is going to lead to, to lung cancer in mice. And we wanted to see whether when we activate KRAS and we put telomerase, this was increasing cancer in mice. We also treated with telomerase before the induction of the oncogene. So in this case, we first put telomerase in the lung and then we induced the oncogene to see whether this could lead to more cancer. When we counted the mice with tumors, we saw that the telomerase gene therapy was not increasing the number of tumors, either in the pretreatment groups or in the simultaneous treatment group. So there is, um, there is no impact on tumor growth in the number of mice with tumors, the tumors per mouse, or the size of the tumors when we put telomerase gene therapy before the activation of the oncogene, or at the same time that we activate the oncogene. So this means that 
the telomerase uh, activation is not going to change the the the, the, nat the natural history of uh, of uh, of cancer because we don't see a synergism between telomerase and the activation of the oncogene in the in the in the mouse cancer so we think that this uh, supports the idea of developing a hum a telomerase gene therapy for humans with the idea of um, of curing or delaying the progression of pulmonary fibrosis. And uh, in my group, we have generated a center where I work, which is the Spanish National Cancer Center, together with the um, University of Barcelona, we generated a new company, which is called Telomer Therapeutics, that we are developing the human vectors to activate telomerase in humans uh, to treat, treat pulmonary fibrosis. Another disease that is of interest for us is renal fibrosis. Uh, this is a very prevalent disease and is also very similar to pulmonary fibrosis. It's characterized by uh, an excessive growth of the fibroblast and uh, by a lack of the ability of the kidney to, to regenerate when there is damage to the kidney. And uh, very recently in my group, we have also tried to see whether short telomeres could be at the origin of this disease. And we have just uh, published a paper. And if you are interested in the detail, you can check it. We just published in Nature Aging. It's a new journal from Nature. Uh, we have shown that also short telomeres uh, can synergize to damage to the kidney. Like uh, in our case, we use uh, folic acid. But we have also used mouse models in which we induce telomere dysfunction uh, directly by removing uh, telomere protective proteins. And we see that this also leads to renal fibrosis. And we have discovered also that uh, short telomeres can, can induce a cellular plasticity process, which is called epithelial to mesenchymal transition, which is common to aging diseases, but also cancer, uh, which would explain why short telomeres could be inducing also more cancer, because short telomeres can induce these changes in gene expression that that uh, aid in the change of identity of epithelial cells to a mesenchymal phenotype, which could be also at the origin of, uh, of fibrosis in different tissues, um, as well as cancer. So we think this is also telling that um, telomerase gene therapy could be uh, useful, not only for, for lung fibrosis, but maybe for other types of fibrosis, like, uh, for instance, kidney fibrosis. And actually, in this paper, we show in vitro that if we isolate epithelial cells with short telomeres and we activate telomerase, we are able to also correct short telomeres in, in kidney epithelial cells. So this could be also a potential therapy. And um, I will end talking a little bit about COVID-19, uh, which as you well know, is a disease produced by the SARS-CoV-2 virus. It's a new uh, coronavirus. We were very curious to understand why older individuals are much more uh, likely to develop a severe COVID disease. Uh, and we think that this is probably because some of the molecular mechanisms of, of aging may be synergizing with the viral uh, infection. And uh, we publish a work in which we measure telomeres in patients, uh, COVID-19 patients from a uh, field hospital in Madrid. This was the first wave of the, of the pandemic in, in Spain. And we saw that uh, there was a correlation between telomere length and severity. So the individuals that, that, that were at the shortest percentile of telomere length or, or the higher percentage of short telomeres were also more likely to develop uh, severe COVID disease. We find this very interesting that the SARS-CoV-2 virus uh, infects many different cell types. So we can infect uh, uh, lung cells, uh, for instance, and the lung cells that are uh, infected are the alveolar type 2 cells, which we know are very relevant for, for pulmonary fibrosis induced by short telomeres. So we have a hypothesis that the virus may be uh, killing the alveolar type 2 cells and older individuals, for instance, because they have short telomeres, they are not able to regenerate as efficiently as young individuals. And this could explain, we think, the fact that the severity of this pathology is, is much higher in older individuals which have short telomeres than in, in younger individuals. So we are developing mouse models to understand the consequences of the, of the COVID infection 
particularly for the sequels of the disease, like pulmonary fibrosis, that as you know is a sequel. Kidney fibrosis and many other pathologies we think this may be related to short telomeres uh, after the viral infection is, is, uh, is passed. There may be um, these sequels, which are diseases um, associated with aging, like the pulmonary fibrosis, etc. And we are trying to, to, to demonstrate this. So I will, I will finish here with a group of people that work at the CNIO uh, on telomeres and telomerase, and in particular, um, the, the telomer aging team, which is half of the group, more or less. The other half is working in, in cancer and the funding for, for the group. So thank you very much for your, for your attention. Thank you so very much, Dr. Blasco. That was a marvelous lecture. Thanks thank for you. sharing your invaluable knowledge on telomeres in aging with us. It is always a truly enjoyable experience to hear directly from leading research in the field. And before this lecture, tons of TimePies subscriber have submitted their questions regarding telomeres to us. Here are the two most representative ones. And I wonder if you would mind giving some of your thoughts on these questions. Okay. The, first one, the first one is, are there any tissue or cell specificities you need to overcome when using the AAV-based telomerase therapy to lengthen the telomeres. Can we treat different cell types from different organs with this same approach? I think we do. You can always uh, use uh, cell-specific promoters. Uh, you, can, you can target specific cells by using the promoters that are expressed in these cell types. So this is a way to target the gene therapy to specific cell type. Um, so you could choose a specific cell type in the kidney or in the lung or in the heart or in, in other tissues. So this can be done with gene therapy. Oh, that's very inspirational. And the second question is, do you think telomeres is a good target for treating skin aging? Yes, I think it could be a good target. Uh, uh, we have developed also mouse models for for different, for instance, different uh, telomere, telomere protective proteins. So you, they are called sheltering. So you can, you can remove one of these shelterings and this induces aging. We have seen that when we, you remove them in the epithelial cells of the skin, for instance, you induce a premature aging. So this means that telomere dysfunction could be also the origin of, uh, of uh, skin aging. So I think, uh, yeah, in theory, um, um, uh, telomerase uh, activation strategy for a skin, maybe you don't need a gene therapy, could be something uh, uh, more um, um, like a cream or something like yeah. that. I mean, you, you, maybe you could also uh, delay aging, yeah, in the skin. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Blasco, for joining the course and sharing stimulating insights on the role of telomeres in aging. And uh, thank you very we much. Have you with us again in future, and uh, my thank best you. wishes for your exciting and significant researches. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.